Hello, everybody. This is the Hollywood Rabbi, and I have a very special Yom Kippur message to share with each and every one of you. The words Yom Kippur means Day of Atonement. The holiday of Yom Kippur falls 10 days after Rosh Hashanah. Goals are not usually met unless there is a deadline. Yom Kippur is our deadline to make amends and uplift ourselves and those around us. It is the day of the year that we most focus on our spirituality. And we are even compared to angels on that day. On Rosh Hashanah, our fate for the new year is inscribed, and on Yom Kippur, it is sealed. However, we don't resign ourselves to fate alone. Through sincere prayer, repentance, and charity, we can alleviate a strict judgment and attain forgiveness and salvation as we forge a closer spiritual bond with the Supreme Being and our fellow human beings. When done properly, the High Holidays serve as a communal workshop that focuses on self-improvement. And this can greatly lighten our load when we inject honesty and integrity into this reflective process. Yom Kippur is all about spiritual realignment. The Hebrew word for repentance is teshuva, which means to return to the path of goodness. Sometimes in life, we get distracted and veer off the road to achieving our personal best. There is only one thing worse than messing up. It's holding on to it afterwards. Guilt and resentment are like weights. The longer we hold on to them, the heavier they become. Forgiveness does more for the victim than the perpetrator. No, we are not condoning the wrongdoing, but rather we are prohibiting the toxins to harm us by carrying the hurt with us. The timeless writer Mark Twain once said, anger is an acid that can do more harm to the vessel in which it is stored than to anything on which it is poured. In other words, it is time to evict the negative thoughts from your mind because these destructive ideas don't benefit you or pay you any rent. The word prayer in Hebrew is lehit palel, which means to judge. Sometimes we are our harshest critics. We need to be more of a life coach than an overbearing boss. Life can be challenging. Please have patience with yourself. How can you expect to be judged favorably on Yom Kippur if you don't give yourself and others the benefit of the doubt? Remember to believe in yourself and try not to be too sensitive to the words that others bestow on us. It is time to find neutrality and rely on your own intuition for your opinion of yourself instead of constantly riding an emotional roller coaster when there are conflicting messages. If you allow compliments to go to your head, you will end up permitting insults to go to your heart. In the words of an inspiring Bob Dylan song, if you want somebody you can trust, trust yourself. We must remember that we are human and everyone fails. The best of us just get up, dust themselves off, and get back in the race. They don't live in the past. They learn from it and move on. Welcome to being human. So you fell. Well, brush yourself off and keep on going. 
Okay, we may have made an error. It may have caused damage, but it is worse to give up on yourself. When we make a mistake, we need to regroup, prepare for the opportunities of a new day, and not let that setback drag us down permanently. This applies to everything in life. We all have aspirations, whether it is financial, academic, or relationships. There are accomplishments that we hope to achieve. But guess what? We are human, so we fail. Part of the human experience is making mistakes. Well, hopefully, not the same ones over and over. Yes, we trip, stumble, and fall. How many times do we drop the ball on something, miss a deadline, bomb a meeting, fail a test, forget an important date, indulge in something that was wrong, do something selfish that hurt those around us? While we are doing it, we are so driven. But once it is done, we realize it was wrong. And that's when we allow our failures to drag us down even further by giving up, justifying or rationalizing our actions, or just blaming someone else. Or we can make the choice to stop, realize it was wrong, learn something productive, and then turn the page. King Solomon, one of the wisest men ever to walk the earth, said in the book of Proverbs, Ki sheva yipol sadik vakam. A righteous person falls seven times and gets up. Notice that King Solomon didn't say, if a righteous person falls, then he gets up. He said, a righteous person falls not only once, but many times and gets up. You know why? Because everyone falls. Everyone. King Solomon's distinction isn't about who makes mistakes, but rather who gets up afterwards. Whatever has happened already, it's already happened. It's part of the past. Unfortunately, we can't do it over. But we can choose to take responsibility, get up, and brush it off, and move on. Let's make it our goal to go the distance in life and work on something we can sincerely improve about ourselves. Let's make it our goal to go the distance in life and work on something we can sincerely improve about ourselves. Let's be the change that we want to see in the world. I want to wish you all a Gemar Chatima Tova. May you and your loved ones all be inscribed in the book of life for happiness, health, prosperity, blessings, and love. Thank you for watching.